Hey guys, it is Yara. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Hope you guys are all doing great for today's video. I'm so excited. Like this morning, I was having my devotion and God was just laid all this on my heart and I was like, I'm so looking forward to sharing this with YouTube. So here I am. <laughs> so for today's video, we're going to talk about why it's so important not to store up or lay up treasures for yourself on earth. So there's so much to talk about. There's so much I could say. I just want to share this little bit with you guys and I really hope this video ministers to you. If it does, please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to share this video with a friend. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please be sure to subscribe. But yeah, let's just get right into this video. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1 says, For we know that if the earthly tent, our physical body, which is our house, is torn down through death, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So in this passage of scripture, Paul is comparing our bodies, our physical bodies to houses, but specifically to earthly tents. Now, when I think of the word tent, I think of camping right away. I've never been camping before. I would like to experience that. But when you go camping, I mean, you can go and spend time in cabins when you go camping. But for the most part, when you think of camping, I think of tents. And basically a tent is this cloth-like material and you can pitch it into the ground and it's mounted up. And yeah, it's usually in like a, a triangular prison type shape, but you can have some in like, like oval looking, I don't know, like little like U-shaped tents. Anyways, that's besides the point. So the first thing I thought of was that tents are 100% not reliable. Now, um, I feel like I've seen this in a movie where people were trying to put up a tent and they were having issues, whether it's the things weren't sticking into the ground or the wind was blowing super rough and so like the tent was shaking and wobbly and they couldn't get it secured properly. But without a doubt, you know, tents are not 100% reliable and they're also not 100% stable either. Like so much damage could be done to a tent. For example, like I said, if the wind is super, super strong, you're not able to mount your tent into the ground properly. Um, if a bear comes and slashes your tent, it's over. You can't tape it with tape. You can't staple it shut. Like it's it's done for, right? Um, so a tent can be destroyed pretty easily, but yeah, it is temporary. And another thing is that tents can go through so much, but still somehow end up standing up. So like I said, you could experience like wind, like strong winds, um, the things, I don't know what they're called, but the, the nails or the wood things you use to stick the tent in the ground, that could for some reason not be working. And so you're going through so much. Um, this tent is going through so much and for whatever reason it manages to stay up. And if we were to think back to like the idea that, that this tent is our physical body, I'm reminded of a scripture in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 that talks about how we are persecuted but not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed, perplexed but not in despair. Um, and it just talks about how us believers, we can go through so much, so much turmoil, so much suffering, and still manage to stay living because of Jesus. And this life, we are guaranteed suffering, we are guaranteed trials and tribulations if we're going to pursue God's will. Back to the verse, Paul is saying we have a building from God. It's such a powerful statement because it represents certainty. We have. It's not like we hope we have, we're hoping to have, we're expecting to have. No, we have a building. I love that because Paul is saying, hey, yes, we have earthly tents, which is our bodies on earth, but we have a building that's waiting for us in heaven. That is so victorious to think about and just so encouraging. Another thing is that this building is from God. So it's not made with human hands, not made with human efforts. Um, it's from God. And so because it's from God, you can just already know that this building is, is going to be great. Another thing is it's a building. So it's like our bodies on earth, you know, our lives on earth that represents an earthly tent. But in heaven, we have a building. I think of a building structure. These things are firm. These things are strong. These things can withstand any type of storms. Comparing a tent to a building, it's obvious that the building is more firm and has a better foundation and it's more reliable than a flimsy tent that could be, you know, blown away by the wind. Another thing is our lives on earth are like vapor. James talks about this, how our lives are like vapor. We are here for a little bit and then we're gone forever. Think of boiling something on the stove. Maybe you're boiling some rice. You're seeing the steam, but as you're seeing it, like you can literally see it, but as you're seeing it, it's, it's vanishing within thin air. So as our earthly tents are being destroyed, this destroying or tearing down symbolizes death. So Paul's basically saying that like as we are dying, 
as we're getting closer to death, we need to remind ourselves that we have a building for us, waiting for us in heaven. I think of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18, which says that while we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are unseen are eternal. I think it's so, so, so important to remind ourselves. Another super encouraging thing is that no one will be able to mess with the building that God has reserved for us and prepared for us in heaven. I think of our earthly tent, so think back to a tent. Anyone can mess with that. You could be camping with friends and your friend can pull a joke on you and then your tent suddenly gets messed up. So many things can happen to your tent, but for the building that's preserved and waiting for us in heaven, nothing can destroy that because God has made that. It's being kept in safe hands and we can trust that that building is waiting for us and it's for us, you know? Um, also, this building doesn't need to be renovated. You think about tents, you may have a tent that lasts you for one season, like one camping season. And when it comes to the heavenly building for us in heaven, like that does not have to be renovated. Our lives on earth, the devil can try to tear us down. He can try to destroy us. The Bible says in John 10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. And destroy, that is a devil, right? So you can see here that um, the devil definitely wants to destroy our lives on earth. I think of Job, the way he attacked Job. He didn't necessarily destroy his tent because Job never died through that tribulation he went through. But he threw so many things at him to the point where he was so close to death. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, it talks about how we're persecuted but not abandoned. Uh, we're perplexed but not in despair. We're struck down but not destroyed. That's like Job. He went through all of that but yet he was still standing up. And so yeah, the devil might try to throw things at you. He might try to kill you. But when we get to heaven, we don't have to worry about going through that warfare of someone trying to take down our building because it's preserved for us and kept in a place in heaven where no one can touch that. So thank you, Jesus. Another thing is there's only so much to boast about if something is made by human hands. Without Christ, we're nothing. Without God, we're nothing. Our earthly tents, like, there's only so much we can do, you know? But when it comes to the building that God has created for us, like imagine a building built by God. The sun came out of his mouth, the one intended sun to die on the cross for our sins. Like that's something that I can boast about. And the Bible does say that we should only boast in glory in God. Another thing is that when God created Adam and Eve, I believe that they had heavenly buildings. That was their body, they had heavenly buildings. But as soon as they sinned, their bodies downsized to tents. And so now we all live in earthly tents. Um, but yeah, that's just a side note. Another thing is that because tents are temporary, you cannot be established in tents. Now, I just want to clarify, there are places in the world where people do live in tents and it's normal to do that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people who live in areas where it's normal to live in a house. So it's not normal to live in a tent. You can't really establish yourself per se because we don't really live here. Our heavenly home, our perfect home, our true home is in heaven. You shouldn't invest too much in your tent because it can be destroyed. For example, imagine spending a thousand dollars on a tent. Now I'm not saying you cannot buy an expensive tent. I definitely believe that if you're gonna get a good tent, you're gonna have to pay a bit of money for that. But I'm just saying that you cannot really establish yourself in a tent, um, you know, buy furniture, buy a bed, buy, a, um, you know, books, buy a chair, buy a fridge. And so that's why it's important that you're not being unwise with the way you're taking care of your tent. So yeah, these tents are temporary. Most times when you are in a tent, it's a temporary situation. You're not there for five years, for four months. You might be there for a week or a couple of days. Um, and so yeah, I think it's important as, for us believers that we remind ourselves that this earthly tent, which is our physical body, our lives on earth, it's just for a season, it's just temporary. So we shouldn't invest too much to the point where we're thinking we're going to stay here for years and years and years. Yes, you may live here for 80 years or more, but that's still a short period of time compared to eternity. I'm not saying that you cannot invest in your life on earth. That is not what I'm saying at all. You should invest in school. You should invest in, you know, money. You should have good finances. Um, you should get married. You should settle down. You should definitely have children. Definitely invest with your family time and invest in taking care of yourself, taking care of your mental health, taking care of your body by eating properly, by getting good exercise. But all that is vanity if you don't know Christ because you're investing so much in these things, not even knowing to you that you have a soul and a spirit that are eternal. And one day they're gonna end up in the lake of fire or they're gonna end up with Jesus in heaven. There's so much to say, but yeah, I'm gonna continue looking through my notebook. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth or rust destroys and where 
thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is there your heart will be also this is such a powerful scripture because when i was reading the first verse of second corinthians chapter 5 i thought of the scripture and it just goes together so well um we shouldn't make the wrong investments as we're living in our earthly tents as we're living in our physical bodies again Nothing's wrong with investing in your family, investing in your friends, investing in marriage and in kids and whatnot. It can't just be that and no Christ. What would profit a man if he gained the whole world, the entire world, but in the end he would just lose his soul, you know? Um, and unfortunately, there are so many people living that life where they're pursuing these things, billionaires, millionaires, celebrities, influencers, TikTok people, you know, pursuing just life, pursuing fun, pursuing fame, and they don't even know who Christ is. And their death could be tomorrow their death could be in two years not knowing that there was a creator who loves them and wants to have a personal relationship with them so it's important that we're focusing on what we cannot see which is our heavenly house and not focusing too much on what we can see which is our physical life here on earth so second corinthians chapter 5 verse 2 to 3 says for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven if indeed having been clothed we shall not be found naked and so paul is basically saying that as we're living in these temporary tents we are so hungry and yearning and longing for our heavenly bodies in heaven so we don't desire to be unclothed which is to be without you know any place to live any place to dwell but we desire to be in heaven with the lord and where his angels are as we're further clothed it is so that mortality may be swallowed up by life and resurrection so that death may be swallowed up by life and then in verse 5 it says now he who has made us and prepared us for this very purpose is God who gave us the Holy Spirit as a pledge, a guarantee, a down payment on the fulfillment of his promise. I like this verse a lot because it's saying here that, hey, the one who made us, he is the one who prepared us also for this very purpose. So the idea that we have earthly tents right now, right now that we are dwelling in and then we have a heavenly building in heaven. That is all orchestrated by God. That's all planned and destined by God, prepared by our Father in heaven. I wrote here how the heavenly buildings which are prepared and reserved for us in heaven are only for those who are children of God. When someone gives their life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit immediately comes and dwells and lives inside of them. He is basically the down payment or security deposit to their inheritance that is in heaven Without the Holy Spirit, no one could be saved. I actually made a video one time where I talked about what it means to be a child of God because many people don't understand that to be a child of God, you must be saved. Even if you are a human, that doesn't mean you're a child of God. To be a child of God is to actually live for Christ. It's to call him your father and it's for you to be his child. Like I mentioned just now, when we get saved, that the Holy Spirit comes immediately to live inside of us. And so in order for us to attain this heavenly ability, this heavenly inheritance, we need his Holy Spirit living inside of us. And when we die, God's not going to be like, are you saved? Are you not saved? He's not going to glitch and be like, I can't tell if you're really saved. No, he knows who the Holy Spirit is. He knows what the mind of the Holy Spirit is. So he'll know who are his sheep and who are the goats that need to be cast into the lake of fire. Hebrews 11. Oh, this is such a powerful passage too. Urged on by faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and went forth to a place which he was destined to receive as an inheritance. And he went although he did not know or trouble his mind about where he was to go. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the Lord calls so many into fellowship with his son Jesus. He wants people to come and have fellowship and a relationship with Christ. He's inviting them to come. As we take that invitation, we may not know what this life leads to. We may not know what this life will entail as we're pursuing Jesus. Now we know the basics, like we're going to have trials and tribulations, we're going to suffer, this and that. But we may not know the specific details. Now, of course, God can give us, you know, glimpses of what he wants us to do. I made a video talking about how God can reveal secrets to us. And that's so true. We can seek the Lord to say, God, you know, who do you want me to marry? Where do you want me to live? What ministry do you have in store for me? What spiritual gifts have you put into my life, put into my spirit? We can seek God to know these little bits and pieces and glimpses of what he desires for us on earth. But I don't believe God is ever going to lay a whole blueprint and say, Yada, this is your life. I want you to do this because if he did that why would we need faith we need to have faith in the lord we need to have faith in him and faith that the inheritance he has for us that heavenly building he has for us is there and it's waiting for us um and then verse 9 says prompted by faith he as an abraham dwelt as a temporary resident in the land which was designated in the promise of god though he was like a stranger 
and a strange country living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs with him of the same promise. This exact specific passage is not necessarily talking about what I'm talking about, like a heavenly body, earthly body per se, but I feel like it just fits so well. Romans 1.17 says that the just shall live by faith. So the ones who are righteous, that in order for them to live, they must live by faith because we cannot physically, you know, see certain things. We have to have faith in God. And the Bible mentions how God is actually an invisible God. So in order for us to actually have a relationship with him, we must have faith that he exists and that he's a rewarder to those who diligently seek him, right? And so with that faith we have, as we're living by faith, because we're just, we are dwelling in temporary tents, right? So it's like as we're dwelling in this temporary tent, as we're living in our earthly bodies, we are having faith in God, knowing that he has prepared for us a heavenly building, which is in heaven. In fact, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 says, Beloved, I urge you as aliens and strangers in this world to abstain from the sensual urges, those dishonorable desires that wage war against your souls or against the soul. And so as we're living on earth, we need to make sure that we're not consumed with this life. Um, in fact, we are sojourners. I don't know if that's how you pronounce the word. It's sojourners. But we are temporary residents. This is not our lives on earth. We're making a pit stop before we make it to heaven, before we get to heaven. And so it's like, as we're making this pit stop, we need to remind ourselves that this is not the end. This is not the permanent residence of where we're supposed to be living. This is just a pit stop. And then verse 10 says, for he was waiting expectantly and confidently, looking forward to the city which has fixed and firm foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Guys, Abraham was waiting for the building that he had in heaven. The one that God made, the one that God built, whose architect is God. Like, that is so encouraging. And I think this attitude that Abraham had is the same type of attitude that we need to have as believers. The last scripture, guys, Psalm 127 verse 1 says, Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. This is such a powerful scripture and it's the best way to end this video. I mentioned before how only, like us humans, there's only so much we can do. But if God builds the house we're going to live in, amen. I just want to encourage you as you're living this life on earth, first of all, commit your ways to God. Yes, it's temporary. Yes, you're on this earth only for a season. Yes, this is not a permanent residence uh, for your dwelling, for your living. But commit your ways to God so that this temporary life on earth is worth it. And that you actually end up doing what you're supposed to be doing. So that you can make heaven your home. So that you can receive that reward that God wants you to receive. We need God. We need God 100%. Don't build your life. Don't build a kingdom for yourself. Don't build a name for yourself. Continue to glorify and build up the name of Christ. Continue to represent Christ in all that you do and all that you say. There's only so much we can do because it's like we don't even know that much to begin with. We're sinners, we're temporary, but God is eternal and he's love and he's joy and he's peace and he has all the knowledge in the universe. Like I'd rather have him build my house than me build my own house because I don't even know what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing without God. I will be making another video by God's grace talking about suffering and why we suffer in the first place and if it's a good suffering or a bad suffering because that's something that I looked at previously before this, which is also in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and 4. But yeah, God is so good and I just, I love reading his word and just receiving such revelation. It's just so encouraging and I really hope this encourages you too. And if you have not already studied the book of 2 Corinthians, do it. It's so good, so powerful. I talked about it in my vlog kind of for a bit, well actually not ranted, but yeah, it's so encouraging. Anyways, I'm done talking. I'm looking forward to the suffering video because I'm going to talk about how like even if we're in this earthly tent, like god's got us you know and it's like oh man anyways i'm guys guys yeah i'm just i'm so happy to know christ and to have a relationship with him he is just so good sorry back to the whole job thing i mentioned how the devil tried to take out his tent his earthly tent and even though it was an earthly tent god sustained him and so it's like, even if you're on this earth and you're in an earthly tent, it's temporary. It could be easily thrown down. It could be easily struck down. It could be easily destroyed. God can sustain you. So the point where it's like, you're trusting in him because he's the one who can raise people from the dead. He's the one who can take care of you. He's got it all under control. Just commit your life to him. But that is it guys for this video. And yeah, I'll see you guys by God's grace in the next one. Bye.